wait a little while. And then when we finish in, in, in encouraging uh, the children of God, we will move on tonight. The subject tonight of the Bible study comes from the story uh, when the Lord, this is in John, uh, the 21st chapter, I think it is, uh, when the Lord told Peter and those men who was with them, they were fishermen, he said to them, cast out your nets. They had been fishing all night long and hadn't caught nothing. And I guess that's not anything strange for people who fish. Sometimes you probably got to spend days and days trying to get a catch, or at least get a good catch. But Peter and his compadres had been out on the water for all night. They were discouraged. They were tired. Uh, they felt like giving up. This is not worth it, et cetera, et cetera. And the Lord told Peter, cast out your net. Peter spoke back, I'm quite sure, telling him we already don't cast the nets out. Uh, it don't take much for you to lose respect for whoever it is in charge of you and, and start talking back to him, especially when you're in a dilemma. Peter's in a dilemma because they're calling thing. And here's Jesus saying, cast the net out again. And he's saying, for what? We've been here all night. We haven't caught anything. But what the Lord was trying to prepare these men for was to get ready for a surprise and spiritual breakthrough after this long and difficult season that they were in. And I'm calling it the pandemic season. It's a metaphor for the times in which we live. It's a metaphor for the conditions that we live in. He said, get back out there, do it again. And I want to come and tell somebody at night in a way of prophetic uh, encouragement, the Lord is telling you to do it again. Try it again. Cast your net out again, even though you haven't caught anything yet even though it don't look as it's getting any better yet, even though it feels as if what's the sense, what's the purpose, the Lord told Peter and he's telling you and me, cast out your nets all over again. You, you In holiness, you got saved. You didn't get saved to give up because something went wrong. You got saved to hold on until Jesus come back. I'm using the pandemic the metaphor is the metaphor for the condition, spiritual conditions in the times in which we live in. So follow along with this uh, uh, discussion tonight as we talk uh, the scriptures and talk about the children of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, this is a prophetic word. People look for prophecy and they look in terms of predict the future for me. I am predicting the future. I'm predicting it right now. The rarely do we share a word of prophecy, but I'm feeling that kind of way tonight. Just a word of inspiration. That's what prophecy is, inspiration and encouragement tonight. We have been through quite an ordeal with the last few years of the pandemic. We've been in this thing now, really, going into the third year of it. Uh, we really are. Uh, and let me say this to you, it appears to be getting worse and worse and worse. Again, it don't appear to be getting worse in our area because we're just a very small part of the United States of America. But if you put us in with the rest of the entire country, uh, this thing is a little more, it's larger than what we thought that it was. We just thank God by his grace and his mercy that we haven't been affected to the degree that other areas in the country have. But we've been through quite an ordeal, quite an ordeal. Uh, we have not, picked up economically, and if we have, it's been sporadically. Uh, people have stopped working. Uh, the government has stepped in. You talk about America turning into a socialist kind of a nation. We definitely have in these last few years, government giving out money like water uh, to people. Now, the problem with that is that if this thing turns around and we come out of this, government gonna want that money back. One of the things I always sit there and listen to, so where did they have this money all the time? Why didn't they give us this money when we were in good times? So they must got tons and tons of money because they've given out a whole chunk of money uh, right through here, uh, right through this pandemic age. But people aren't working. They say some of the reason they're not working is they're getting money. I don't know if that's the reason or not because they just cut that off. If you've been getting a check every week and then after work, you better look into it, call your, your social casework or something. Because one thing about the government, they're going to some kind of way 
want their money back. What they're doing now is saying, okay, y'all, come back to work because it's affecting the whole economy. It's affecting everything we do in this country. Uh, businesses are closing up. Businesses are losing money like crazy. Uh, so you need to come on back. Since we can't get a hold on the, the pandemic like we want to, COVID-19, the, the virus, uh, the, the virus that came from it is even worse than COVID-19. So we, we want you back in work. They gave us the, some solution, put that mask on, they said. That tends to work, it seems to work. Also, put the, get that vaccine, that tends to work. And so now they're saying, get yourself up and come on back to work. Strangest thing, uh, interesting thing, fascinating thing. I went to Kentucky Fried Chicken, it must have been last week, to get some uh, chicken. I, I used to really, really like Kentucky Fried Chicken. Don't like it as much as it is, and I just don't have the same taste that it used to have back in the day. But it's still good, don't get me wrong, for me, on certain days, it's still pretty good. Uh, but I went and, and it was closed. And this is like not middle of the day, but uh, early in the day, it was before five, six o'clock. So I'm kind of trying to figure out Kentucky Fried Chicken, why are they closed? You know, they never closed, you know that. And so uh, I went to the next day and I went back and I asked the man, I said, I came up yesterday, but y'all was closed. So I thought maybe they ran out of chicken. There's a lot of restaurants running out of stuff. Uh, he said, no, we can't find any workers. I said, Kentucky Fried Chicken can't find workers? I had never heard nothing like that. We all grew up working at Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Some, something similar to Kentucky Fried Chicken at least one time in our life. Then I thought about how serious this might be. Might be way more serious than what we think that it is. Uh, the day I was watching television, the tail end of the day, uh, and out east, uh, I think it was Massachusetts, they don't have enough school bus drivers to transport the kids because the bus drivers are quitting because of COVID-19. They won't take the, the vaccination, and so they quit. Now these little kids can't go to school. They, and, and it's so important that you get these kids back to the schoolhouse because uh, virtual education only can do so much and only last so long and only go so far. Uh, give it a decade or two, our kids are going to be so far behind educationally uh, because they couldn't go to school or they didn't go to school or whatever the reasons are. Just a word of inspiration and encouragement tonight. We've been through quite an ordeal because of this pandemic. And the pandemic is a metaphor or symbol of what in the Old Testament was the wilderness experience that the children of Israel experienced when they had come out of captivity and was trying to find their way through back to freedom. And they couldn't hardly find their way back. The Bible said they spent 40 years in the wilderness, lost. What a horrible experience it could have been. They spent at least a whole generation in there completely lost. Uh, God knows we hope this thing get over uh, and don't turn into a, a multi-decade kind of a situation. And I, I was thinking at my age, you know, it, it's going to take a decade or two for this thing to, to end, if it ends naturally, which means that by the time it do end, I'd be so old, I wouldn't be able to enjoy uh, the fruits of the, the labors of the ending of it. That's, that's what I want us to see how devastating this pandemic has been, this, this pandemic, the spiritual uh, effect that it is even having on the children of God. But I come to tell you tonight, this is the prophetic part. It's time to start getting ready for the celebration because God is going to deliver not only his people, but deliver this world out of this. He's going to pull us out of this. And when he pull us out, we've got to know what the Bible says. The song says, what side are you on? A lot of saints will get lost through the midst of this just like a lot of children of Israel got lost. A generation got lost. They, they never came out of it. They didn't come out of it. John 21, 6, that's the scripture. Uh, saints are weary and stressed out. Peter tried to tell Jesus when Jesus said, cast your net back out there. Peter was trying to say, Jesus, we are weary and we're stressed out. A lot of saints during this time of stress out. You can look on their faces. All you got to do is stand in the pulpit on a Sunday morning and look out there at the saints. And we usually break through and end up having pretty good church 
and God knows I'm praying that you're getting good word, uh, but this thing just wore down. These kind of experiences will wear you down. Uh, church leaders feel disorientated. Uh, if you look at any social statistics, pastors are folding up, walking out, leaving churches like crazy. Uh, I know in Ohio, two or three churches that the pastors just left and quit. They just said, I'm, I'm tired and I'm going to somewhere else. And a lot of times what we do, we, we say the Lord told me to get up and go. But if he told you to get up and go, you can't just leave people sitting there. And that's what happens. So many times they just there and you gone. And then that's what you got to ask yourself. Did you, the Lord say, get up and go and just leave them there and let them fend for themselves? Uh, Sunday school people, y'all hear me here. Uh, does a prophet fend a lot of people to fend for themselves? No, the prophet is there to lead, encourage, inspire other people of God. But there are church leaders, and, and I'm talking about uh, pastors right here, uh, that are disorientated. This thing has taken its toll socially uh, on the religious world. Just taking its toll. People don't stop going to church. They have actually stopped going to church. Uh, the generation was on the verge of quitting anyhow. Uh, this modern generation, we live in super modern generation. But there are people who don't even go to church anymore. They don't have to go. One, we have the high technology uh, world that we live in where you can go on TV virtually and you can do what we're doing here tonight. I can sit here and look at your faces. You can look at my faces. You can see and hear my voice. And so, therefore, many have, not y'all, y'all here, obviously, but there's many people, church people throughout the land, holiness people, sanctified people, our people have not gone back to church, won't go back to church, because when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, uh, came out of the wilderness, came through that pandemic, they had lost so much. The Bible said there was a generation that rose up that didn't know the Lord, didn't even know it. Generation that didn't know the Lord no more. And that's what happened to us, and we got to be aware of the effect that this thing is having on us. Pastors tired, trying to uphold the people, hard to uphold them people over there in that wilderness when all of them were just, just dejected, discouraged, tired, uh, didn't want to listen to leadership. Almost, they were almost like they were when they were in Egypt uh, and Moses was trying to get them together to get them out. And when he did get them out, uh, the people was co so cantankerous until some of them began to say, we don't want to hear you, Moses. We don't want to hear you. We want to hear God. And they listened to God until he started judgment. And then when the judgment started coming down from everywhere, that's when they said, well, Lord, let us hear Moses' voice. Uh, they had got the lost respect for leadership. They didn't respect Moses at all. Moses was straight. You, you remember the situation where Moses, they kept saying, give us some water, give us some water, give us some water. Uh, Moses, I'm going to give you some. Give me a little while. I'll, I'll take care of this. We're going to eat. We're going to drink after a while. We want it now. We want it now. Finally, uh, Moses hit the rock, and he hit it so hard until water started coming out of the rock. And he told him to drink. I, I won't say everything that he said, but he, what he said to them cost him almost his salvation. The Bible said that after that, Virtually, the Lord told Moses, okay, that's, that's enough. Goes back to what we talked about in Bible class. Uh, Saul could, David could not touch Saul because even though Saul had turned on the children of God, he still was God's anointed. Moses, even though those people had pushed him to the limit, he couldn't cuss them out. He, when he hit the rock and told him to drink and he said words that he shouldn't have said, he can't, he, they made him mad. Did he have a right to? He probably did. You would too. You would not only do that, you probably wouldn't give him no water. Okay? Online church, though convenient, is becoming regular, predictable, and boring. I heard one say, I said, why don't you come to Bible class? They said, the Zoom was boring. So I said, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, is it boring? It is probably some. Some can't sit here and watch this screen type of ministry, and we all probably won't be able to do it forever. Uh, now, if you're trained to do computer stuff, yeah, it's probably a little easier. Uh, you who have used computers in school, most of us haven't because this generation has rose that 
We haven't done that. We just haven't done it. Well, we thank God we got over 20 already tonight. That's a blessing. Y'all doing real good. Uh, but the thing is that uh, they were saying it was boring. So I'm saying, whoa, wait a minute now, wait a minute. You got to be very careful because even though we're not in church, we're still in church. <laughs> Anytime we go into the word of God, you have to be very careful. So I'm trying to say to them, well, they, it might be born, but you need to listen. You need to be on the Bible class, you know, uh, what have you, uh, because we're living in stressful times. And we're trying to do everything we can. I'm quite sure all other churches open in the name of the Lord is trying to. Uh, some have weakened dramatically. Here are four or five things that I've listed that has happened to the saints of God. Some have weakened, spiritually weakened. Now, the problem with saints spiritually, I'm trying to encourage you tonight, hold on through this wilderness, this night that we're going through. Don't give up hope. Don't give up the strength. You don't have that much, that little strength that you got. You got to hold on to it. You got to treat the Lord like you treated him before the pandemic. You know, before the pandemic, we was having church on Tuesdays at the church. Then we would have brotherhood. Uh, every other Wednesday, I think. Then we had a Friday night service. Uh, we had a Sunday school for the kids. Uh, things have changed dramatically. But in the process, some are losing their faith. They're weakening. You don't want to weaken. You want to get even more powerful. You want to get closer to the Lord, even though that you can't be with the saints like you generally were. That's why when you come to church on Sunday, you have to give God everything you've got because that's your that's the time to get it all in. You know, you ain't going to shout Tuesday night. I don't see nobody jumping up shouting it right now. So, so you got to get it all in on Sunday when you get to the house of the Lord. Okay? Uh, the Bible says that there shall be a great falling away. Many, many people who call themselves saints, Christians, uh, have drifted away during this time of the pandemic. Uh, they have gotten to the place, this is across the country now, where they don't come to services. The doors of the house of God is open for some, but some haven't been open in a year, two years. Uh, and I know, and I, God knows I understand uh, the fear, the concern uh, for this pandemic and some, some places are in locales where they can't open. Uh, but I, that's why I keep saying, throw a little faith in you. I know people say, hey, you, this is the only time we can really use the faith like the Lord would have us to use. You got to put a mask on your face and get up and come on to the house of the Lord. You have to do that. Even if it's boring, you have to do it. You have to tell your children. You have to tell your family people. You have to let them know. People always ask me, a lady asked me at the bank yesterday. She was uh, behind the counter. She said, are you, you're, you guys in church? I said, yeah, uh, we've been in church. And I told her how long. So I asked her, have they been in church? She said, no, they haven't been to church. People need church. They need to be in the house of the Lord because the spirit of the Lord, it is dispensed in the house of the Lord to people. Now you are a little different because you've got the Holy Ghost. Wherever you go, it goes with you. But even with that, you need to refuel it. Every now and then you need to come back into here and just shout like you're crazy. That's what we have in this prayer thing uh, this month. You need to come back and just be in a place where other people are praising the Lord, where you, you might not can't get a praise through, but you can look at somebody else getting one because that's enough sometimes for you. Own. Number three, some on the verge of spiritual breakdown. You know by natural breakdown, people just can't take it no more and they just scream and holler, pull their hair off, pull their wigs off. Uh, because of the spiritual quarantine and the isolation they've been in. We're social creatures. We need each other. Uh, we can't live without each other. We have to be around a neighbor. We have to see somebody in the store. We have to be, we have to be able to say hi to somebody because that's just how God made us. He made us to be social. And so when we're not social and we're isolated or we quarantined like we have been the last three and a half years, we're coming out of now, saints. People are starting to get in their cars and go places. They had the football game this last week, 90,000 people in one stadium. Now, that's a little dangerous to me. Might be a little too quick too soon, but people are tired of sitting in their houses by themselves, so they're starting to come back out again. Yeah, it comes. <laughs> so you have to be careful. You have to be careful when you come back out, but they're trying to bust out of this pandemic. 
Uh, and if they don't find some kind of herd immunity soon here, uh, these people are going to go crazy. Saints don't go crazy. Saints don't go crazy. Now we might already be crazy, but we don't go crazy. <laughs> so we know that even in the midst of this, we continue to praise God. Then four, sin has a bound. Now one thing that happens to saints of God, the less you are in God's face, the easier it is for you to sin. Uh, the less you go to church, the easier it is for you to fall into dilemmas, situations. Uh, you, you get people, they get all coupled up with each other. And before you know it, they have forgotten the rules of holiness. They forgot what the Lord don't say because they're isolated and quarantined and they need interaction until they forget what God is saying here. So I say to us in the midst of all of these days of pandemic uh, and it creates loneliness and isolation, don't fall into the traps of sin. Don't let uh, our, our lack of being in a place of comfortability destroy us spiritually. Because let me say this too, the devil did not cause the panic, but he took advantage of the panic. The Lord allowed this thing to happen like he does with that, what happened to us, like he did with Peter in, in this, this fish uh, uh, expedition. He allowed them to go all night without catching anything. But in the midst of it, the devil took advantage and told Peter, and I'm paraphrasing here, putting together conjecture, told Peter, the Lord doesn't listen to you. Y'all been out there all night long and haven't caught one fish. And he's telling you to cast your net back out again. I wouldn't do it. But the Lord tells us, anyhow, cast your net back out into the sea. That's what he's saying to you, you individually. He's saying, cast your net. Whatever it is that you need from God, want from God, desire from God, he's saying, go ahead and cast in. This might be the best time for you to get close to the Lord. Might be the best time, actually, because there's not as many distractions. You can't do all the stuff you was doing. You cannot go out of places that you was going to go, even though we starting to. So you might need to take some of this downtime and get closer to the Lord, get deep in his word, get more connected in prayers, and then revert to the behavior that he wants you to exert. And that is a behavior of holiness. Uh, number five, tension in the relationship is overwhelming. Uh, you have never seen so much tension among people right through here. People, you get mad with somebody at the drop of a hat. <laughs> And it comes from the stress and the tension of this pandemic and these times, which is so different uh, than we're in. Now, all of y'all under the sound of my voice and me as well, we've never seen nothing like this before. We have never seen, and I don't know, there's not too many people living in America that has been through anything like this. Uh, the last pandemic was what, 1918. So that means that it might not be nobody old enough in America who can remember the last pandemic, you see. Uh, but the Lord tells us, cast your net back out into the water because you're coming out of this. You're coming out of this. I was talking to somebody and they was uh, trying to tell them that you're going to get out of this. This is a troubled generation. This must have been a little how Peter felt after fishing all night and catching nothing. He probably felt uh, this, is, this is too much, this ain't nothing. He probably told the boys to uh, get your gear, we're going in, we're going in land, we ain't gonna be out here all night. The feeling of emptiness. If I ask how many feel have felt emptiness in the midst of all this, a looseness, a worthlessness, a general spiritual confusion sets in. Nothing seems to go right. Can't seem to get a hope. Hold on, I'm telling you, hold on. Help is on the way. This is a dark day, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Peter's dilemmas, he had already failed the Lord. Now see, now it's during times like this that the Lord brings up everything that you don't done that you had no business to do, and he, he works on your mind. Somebody tells me constantly that you think too much. I say, well, how can I stop thinking? 
but he works on your mind. That's what he did on Peter. Peter, when the Lord told him to cast his neck back in the water, he, had, he was having this one-on-one -on -one with Jesus and he was saying to himself, I failed already. He had denied Jesus three times. He assumed that he was disqualified. He probably was highly depressed. His esteem probably was really kind of low. He out there in the middle of the sea and here is Jesus saying, cast your net back out there in the water. He felt totally rejected, totally rejected, especially when he started to remember how things used to be. Yeah, we got times when we had tremendous good times, but you cannot live in those times. You got to praise him right now. You got to do that. Another thing you can do, you can't worry about what others are doing. You got to praise God yourself. And you got to praise him. Now you can remember the good times, but you got to praise him for the times right now. Okay. If at first you don't succeed, you try again. Failure hurts. But then out of nowhere will come resurrection. Out of nowhere, God will pick you up, touch you, deliver you, and resurrect you if you hold on long enough. He says, after you have suffered a while, he says, after you've suffered around 1 Peter 5 and 10, he said, Christ himself shall restore you, confirm you, strengthen you, and establish you. After we come out of this dark time period, God himself is going to resurrect somebody. Somebody on the sign of my voice is going to come out more mature spiritually going to come out closer to the Lord. Peter threw the net back in. The Lord told him two things. Put your net back in the water. He said, but what I want you to do this time, I want you to throw it on the right side. Because see, sometimes the Lord wants you to do something a little bit different. <laughs> I look at it from the perspective of you, if you've been shouting on the left side, shout on the right side. If you've been praising him at nine o'clock in the morning, try getting up at eight o'clock and praise. Oh, glory. You see, do it in a different, let the devil get confused because he's the kind of uh, animal creature. He works in what is normal and what is regular. What really confuses him when you do something out of the norm, when you do something out of the regular. That's why if you pray out loud, try praying silently. You will send him into a frenzy because if he can't hear you, he don't know what you're saying. He can't attack you because he don't know what you're saying. Uh, they tell me that when you speak in tongues, he don't know what you're saying, and, and he gets angry. That's why your tongues need to come through during this pandemic. He don't know what you're saying. He don't know what you're saying. He don't know what you're doing, and it destroys him. He said, Peter, throw your net back in the water and store it on the right side. This time is all that matters. You can tell the Lord, I threw it in there last night and I didn't catch nothing. Last night don't matter. And that's what you got to get in your head. Last night don't matter. Only thing matters now. When God gives his word to go, it's time to lunch out into the deep. And he's trying to take the lunch out into the deep. Now, what does that actually mean? I mean, really believe him and really trust him. Sometimes, you know, you use those kind of scriptures. I think they're supposed to pack the bags, get up and leave and move to California. It don't mean that geographically. And I won't say that the Lord might not, uh, you know, Bishop Jace was in little West Virginia. The Lord directed him to get up and go to Dallas, Texas. That was a whole nother situation. But what he means is lunch out to the deep, get closer to me. Yeah, y'all remember the situation when Jesus was walking on the water and Peter looked at him and jumped out there, said, can I come to you? Lord said, come on, come on out here. Come out in the deep, go out with some faith, with some anticipation. You might have had mediocre success before, but this time, forget about last time. Even though you toiled all night, but this time, this is your prophetic word right here. You won't have to toil all night. It's going to come in a heartbeat, in a serious heartbeat. Uh, just word of encouragement from you. I've, I've been, my leg was bothering me for 12 weeks since the beginning of summer. And uh, I woke up this morning. I can't, I've been telling you for the last couple of days, it's gone. The Lord, 
healed and that healing comes through the prayer of the saints. I believe that the prayers of the righteous, but also through continually praising God through the midst of all of this. You see, cast your nets back out there. Don't let the pandemic destroy what you got, my Lord. What does it take? It takes some expectation. Believe in God. Take some faith. Takes timing and positioning, preparation. That's what this pandemic has been about. God getting you ready. He's getting you ready. He's getting you ready for a mighty blessing. Some of you in here, and I feel it in my spirit. I, 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 and I saw this during the, the, uh, the block party we had. When I saw those vending tables from the, those saints in our church, who some of them was uh, entrepreneurs, some of them had created things that they were selling. And I saw the talent and the creativity uh, and the Lord, I believe he said to me, some of these people in here are gonna do well with this stuff. So some of you are being set up for a tremendous blessing from the Lord. Now only you are gonna be able to stop it. You're gonna be able to stop it, but some of you are getting ready to be blessed by God because he's giving you talents to do things that you probably didn't think you knew how to do or didn't know how to break through and do. And he's giving you money. These things making money out of this stuff. And you'd be wondering, Lord, why didn't they do this before? I mean, good money. To cast your net back out there. Now, Lord, I want you to put him first. I dare that you try to pull something off and you have not given God the right attention and put him first. But I dare you to put him first and then go in there and open up a little vending table. You see, what do you mean putting God first? Pay your tithes and your offering. Give God glory for whatever it is that you out there selling. Uh, don't miss coming to church just because you, because some of you are getting ready to get blessed to the point where you have to go make a decision. Should I go to church on Sunday? Should I have to stay here and, and sell my stuff? See, but when you put the Lord first, you won't have to miss not a service and still be blessed by the Lord. This ain't for everybody. You know, it, it's, it's not for hard-headed uh, people or stubborn people who are gonna do what they wanna do. And you still might be blessed a little bit, but not the way God wants you to be blessed. He says in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, everything there's a season and a time every person under the heaven. Seasons have promises. Seasons prepare us, mature us, and accelerate us. We're in a season of preparation. That's what this is all about, saints. We're being developed as we listen to and adhere to his word, both of his words, the Logos and the Rhema. Logos is the spoken word of God and the Rhema is the written word of God. We're being blessed. Even tonight, you're being blessed by the Rhema word of God. Every time you read a scripture, you're being blessed. And every time you hear a word being preached or Sunday school class being taught or, or somebody you're being blessed, you're being prepared, you're being matured for this blessing that you're sitting on. You've been sitting on a, a gold mine for a long time, did not know it, and been getting residue from the gold mine and didn't know it. You ain't went under, you ain't been under yet. You had a rough days and rough night. Peter had to stir God all night long. Satan, the enemy, trying to tell him, okay, you finished, don't, don't, don't go back. But the Lord said, go back out there and cast that net, this time throw it on the right side of the boat. The miracle was Jesus' way of showing Peter he was still in the game. You're still in the game. You're still here. A lot of stuff don't happen to you, but you're still here. Many of us feel like Peter. We're tired and we wonder if our labor is in vain. The cock sister said, no, 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 your labor ain't in vain. We're seeing age, our congregation is aging. We're seeing infect, uh, ineffective metal, uh, methods of ministry as, as the church try to bounce back. I'm talking about the universal church. Uh, organizationally, churches are having tremendous time bringing people back together. The paradigm has shifted. We're not going to be able to do what we've done in the past. We're just not going to do it. People talking about their summer conventions, they're not going to get no 10,000 people at no summer conventions no more. Not for a good while. Because you know how scared we are in the first place. And we ain't gonna be sitting up in no place, no ballroom, <laughs> trying to have services. You see, the paradigm has changed. Culture that is hostile to our faith in the church. There's a culture out there, people will go to a football game, but they're gonna tell you not to go to church. They're gonna tell you not to go to church. 
we will make people put on a mask, but you go to a football game, I saw them 90,000 people sitting up in them stadiums and they didn't, every once in a while you might saw a mask. Uh, there's a thing in social studies today called uh, culture, uh, cancel culture. They're trying to cancel the church. It's one of the first institutions they're going to try to pull when they start pulling things. Uh, and they're going to do it. You know, they, they won't do it right now. It, the government would have to change, but you can see how the government's gone through so many changes as it is. Okay. I, we're, we're probably can get, if the Lord allows to get to this pandemic, if he will, President uh, Biden will be out of office probably. Uh, the next administration that comes back in probably would be Republican. The only thing we can pray the hope is not as draconian Republican as the Trump era was, because if we go back to that era after this pandemic, we're in serious trouble. I'm talking about the world. Cast yet again, but he is calling from the shores. Cast out your nets. Try the right side. He promised a surprise after a long season of fruitlessness. He promised you a blessing. I found the scripture in 2 Kings 13 and 18. <clears throat> and the scripture deals with the prophet telling the king uh, to take a stick and strike the ground three times. And so what happened was that the king, king of Israel, he said, and after you strike it three times, the Lord is going to bless you. Uh, so the king took the stick and hit the ground the first time. And then he hit it the second time. And then he hit it the third time. And then he stopped. He didn't hit it no more. The point of the story was the Lord was telling him, don't stop. Keep on striking the ground because your blessings was coming from you obeying and striking. He did three times, that was enough. I'm telling you, don't stop. Strike again. Throw that net back out into the waters. Remember the strike. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them and he said to the king of Israel, smite the ground and he smote the, the ground thrice and stayed. But don't stay, don't stop. Strike it all over again. This is your time. This is your day. Your blessing is upon you. If I ask everybody in here about what do you feel about coming out of the wilderness? Do you feel like God's going to do something for you? Do something for us, the church of the living God. Do something for your children. Now, you must let us stop limiting God and strike again. Let us stop slowing down and run a little bit faster. Let us keep pouring into the ministry with our prayers and our fasting and our giving and our praising and our love. Let us keep pouring into businesses. Whatever the Lord has put set on your hand to do, do it. And I want to bless those right now. I want to bless those people who are trying to do this entrepreneurial stuff. I won't call their name tonight, but you know who you are and the saints know who you are too. You're trying to do stuff and the Lord is blessing you a little bit. Uh, keep building your prayer ministries. Keep striking until he says stop because he didn't say stop yet. He said, cast your net back out into the sea. This time, threw it on the right side of the boat. Yeah, that, that's a metaphor for change your worship, change your praise. I, I think I preached Sunday Praise belongs to us, but worship belongs to God. When you praise and raise that praise to a certain level, worship takes over. And then that's when God opened up the windows of heaven and he pours out a blessing that you didn't have room for to see. I, I, I think that's, I'm pretty close. I don't break heaven here. I think I'm pretty close. Okay. This is it. Speak things as though they were. Stop complaining and stop doing to yourself, uh, blocking your own blessings. Speak life. It's in the tongue to yourself. Joyce Myers, who is not my favorite television religious personality, she gives some simple keys to live uh, in anticipation of the blessing of God. One, she says, stop complaining. I think she gives three. I think that's it. 
First thing Joyce said, the Lord gave her, and I liked it, stop complaining. His grace and goodness always outweighs the things we think are wrong or impossible. What you think can't be done, it can be done, and it's going to be done. Don't be like the king of Israel when the prophet told him to hit the ground three times. Hit, he didn't tell him how many times. He said, hit his man, hit it three times. Nothing happened, so he quit. If it don't come the third time, hit it the fourth time. Stop complaining. Two, come out of your stage of self-pity. It's a poor, bad attitude. And self-pity and power cannot exist at the same time. Even you're, either you're pitiful or you're powerful. See, speak things that are not as if they were. Speak as though they are going to come. Give God credit. This is the third thing that uh, Sister Meyer says. Give God the credit. Never take credit for anything that happens to you that's good. Give it to God by saying, God did this for me, and I know he did. God has already done or is going to do why steal his glory? And finally, I end with these words to the saints of God here tonight. Prepare your nets. After we get off the Zoom, you need to, if you can, say some silent prayers to yourself. Get your net ready. Open your heart and serve with forgiveness. Learn how to forgive yourself and everybody else that you're complaining about. Last week, we did the class on gossiping, I think, of the week before that. Stop the gossip. Uh, don't serve God with condemnation and judgment. Serve him out of your love. Give him credit for what he on done for you. Uh, learn how to say, if you haven't learned it yet, if it's the Lord's will, I would do this or that. I will give you a catch, God says, like he told Peter, that you cannot contain. I don't know about y'all, but I'm waiting on the filling up of my net where I will have so much that I can't contain it. And I got to share with every one of y'all listen to me and the sound of my voice tonight. All, all of these households that's on this Zoom service tonight. Any questions or, or comments or a testimony? Somebody got a testimony they want?